What I'm going to illustrate here is the use of what is known as a Cartesian diver. It's uh, a device that's marketed as a toy, but it also can be used to illustrate a number of science concepts. And I'm going to do that here. First of all, we can show how we can use a Cartesian diver to illustrate how density of an object can be used um, as, a, as a device in chemistry when we study the concept of density. And as well, we can use a Cartesian diver to illustrate the concept of one of the gas laws, and that is Boyle's Law. So what I have is a, a very simple type of Cartesian diver, and that is a pipette which has been cut off at a certain point, and then a nut has been put onto that piece of the pipette, and I've filled the, the pipette with a certain amount of water, and I'll show you how to prepare this a little bit later on. I introduced this concept of density early on in the year, but the gas laws are used later on, uh, or discussed later on in the year. So I can use this particular Cartesian diver at two different points of the year. And students enjoy working with these, they enjoy making their own. I have a two liter bottle with water in it. Recall that a substance which is less dense than another medium will float in that medium, whereas if it's more dense than the medium, it will sink. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this Cartesian diver in the water. And you'll notice that that Cartesian diver is currently floating, which means it's less dense than the medium around it. Screw the cap on, and now I'm going to take this bottle and I'm going to apply pressure to the outside of the bottle. What that does is it causes the pressure in the medium to increase, and by applying just a gentle bit of pressure, I can get that to sink. If I apply a little bit less pressure and slower, I can get that Cartesian diver to sink at a slower rate. And that's what I'm going to do here. Just a gentle bit of pressure. Almost imperceptible. And if I ease up, I can get that diver to float. Now, that's a simple Cartesian diver. There are other neater ones, and in fact, some companies market them, and some of them, one of them is called a squiddy, and it has a squid shell on it. And it's rather nice, but there are some others. When I was young, it goes back a long way, one of the cereal companies marketed their cereal with a Tony the Tiger in it. Now, I don't tell the students just how long ago this was, but it was a few years ago, before they were born, in fact. Tony is a trained tiger, and Tony will float on its own, but Tony will sink on command. And that's pretty much how I, I introduce Tony. So, Tony, for the students, will you sink for me, Tony? Come on, come on, Tony. Come on, come on, Tony. Sink for me. Tony? <gasps> Thank you, Tony. All right, you can go back and float for a while. Tony, sink. Come on. Give you a cookie. Ah, there you go. And that's Tony. And then I came across another 
Cartesian diver. This is a, what is marketed as a glass imp, a very fragile glass. Uh, a company in Germany makes these. And the neat thing about this one, well, you'll see. It doesn't have to be in a, a one liter bottle, but it is. Now, it sings just like the others, but when it surfaces, it spins. And that's pretty neat. So it sings just like the others, but then the way it's constructed, it gives a nice little spinning action. So we have three different Cartesian divers here. Let's take a look at the principle behind this dealing with gas laws. Density, students can figure that one out fairly easily. Gas laws is another story. So let's go to our easel to take a look at the diagram. Here we have two different Cartesian divers but they work in the same principle. They have water in part of the Cartesian diver, but then we have a chamber of air in there. And the amount of water and air will, depend upon, will determine whether this Cartesian diver is more or less dense than the water around it. As it's floating, it's less dense. As we press on the outside of the bottle, we're increasing the pressure around the water, or in the water, and around the Cartesian diver. And increasing the pressure forces additional water up into the chamber, compressing the air that's there. Because we've increased the pressure, remember pressure and volume are inversely related. So increasing the pressure of the water will also increase the pressure on the air, which causes the volume of the air to decrease, allowing additional water to come into that chamber, increasing the total mass and therefore the density of the Cartesian diver. And when the density increases, the diver sinks. When you release the pressure, on the, on the bottle, water comes out of the diver, and therefore the diver surfaces. And that's the principle behind this Cartesian diver. So you can introduce the concept of gas laws in addition to refreshing their memory about density concept. Okay. Let's go back to our divers, and let's see how we can prepare one of those divers. So I'm going to take this out of here. And to do that, I'm going to squeeze the bottle enough to get the water near the top and then grab hold if I can. I'm going to go to the sink because I don't want to make a mess. I'm just going to squeeze enough to get the diver out. Okay. Now. I'm also going, now that I have my Cartesian diver, I'm going to get the water out of there. Let's show you from the start. Okay? Less dense than the water. It's floating. What I do then is I fill up the chamber part way with water. You notice I'm doing it in a beaker. Don't start with the two liter bottle because if it's more dense than the, bo than the water in the bottle, it's going to sink and then you have to pour the water out and start start over again. So right now it's floating. I'm going to take a little bit out of, a little bit of the water out of the diver, a couple of drops, because what I want it to do, actually I want, if I take more water out, which I just did, it's less dense, what I want it to do is just barely float in the water. So let me fill it more. 
That's too dense. So I'm going to take a few drops out. Still too dense. And this is actually something that you can have the students do and see if they can figure out just how much water they need to just barely get it to float. And it's really, it's in a way, it's not trial and error. And there we go. And that now is just floating, which is what you want. You don't want it to be floating so high that no matter how much pressure you put on that bottle, that diver is not going to sink. And that is not only how we use a Cartesian diver, that's also how you can make a Cartesian diver on your own.